cyclical or cyclic aliphatics are ones where you have those straight chains. Well, they're not really straight chains now. You take the ends of the straight chains, you pop off a couple of hydrogens, and you put them together in a circle. So they don't really obey the general formula rules for their various groups, but they do have a circular type of nature to them. What would that be right there? Well, one, two, three carbons all attached in a ring. Well, that's a probe. But because it's in a circle, we call it cyclo. Cyclo propane. Oh man, that's easy. And that's kind of fun to do too. And it's going to be easier to draw than this. And nobody really does this kind of drawing here for the cyclical compounds when you can just do line diagrams for them. Okay? And you can do for this one a triangle. Right? So that means, well, what's that? That's a square. Well, yeah, but in organic chemistry, you can't write square down here and get marks for it. You got to look at that and say, one, two, three, four carbons in a circle. That's going to be cyclobutane. Oh, yeah. Isn't that nice? Cyclobutane. Now, that one, that's a house. Yeah, so I suppose I could actually draw it better so all of them, all the sides are equivalent when I turn my head, but I'm just not a very good artist. So, here's the deal. What's this one called? Oh, yeah. Now, you're saying, well, I get it. That's a cyclo there, and five is pent, so it's going to be a cyclopentane. Uh-huh. But what's on it? A branch, a methyl branch. So it's going to be methyl cyclopentane. Kim guy, you forgot something. Kim guy, you forgot something. What did I forget? Pray tell. You forgot to put the one in front of the methyl because the carbon's on the one? Well, any, anywhere you put it in the circle, the carbon's always going to be at the first, car, the first carbon in the circle because that's going to be the most important carbon in the circle, the one with the branch on it. So therefore, that is just methyl cyclopropane. You don't have to say one. But sometimes you have to say, for instance, what would that be right there? Okay, now this one is going to have two methyls on it. One's going to be at the one. The other one, keep going, man. Go clockwise, because that's, that's right. One, two, three, four, four. No, no, you don't do that. It's the lowest numbers possible. One, two, three. Yeah. This one would then be one comma three hyphen dimethyl cyclopentane. Mm -hmm. Halides are group seven elements, right? Halogens. Uh, 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 fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, iodine, astatine, although that one's not very popular for these type of reactions. Type of reactions? Well, you can actually place those onto organic molecules by substitution or addition reactions generally. And, and those are coming up later. And <clears throat> so we need to be able to name them when we have substituted onto an organic molecule a halogen. So what do we do here? Well, there's methane where a hydrogen's been taken off and a fluorine's been put on. All of the halogens, chlorine, bromine, iodine, fluorine, will become prefixes that will actually be the more important prefixes and the more complex ones if you name branches. We'll, cut, we'll treat it like a branch, really. Chloro, bromo, iodo, iodo, and fluoro. So um, those are the prefixes that we'll utilize. And when we name this one now, well, it's a methane with a fluoro on it. So real simple, that's fluoromethane, right? Fluoromethane. Right. Now, by the way, if you had three F's on there, that would be trifluoromethane, right? And now that would be a very important type of chemical that would act as a refrigerant, really. And that's like having a, uh, a multiple fluorinated car uh, uh, hydrocarbon. If you put a chlorine on there too, now you've got a chlorofluorocarbon, and those are very damaging to the environment because they will actually help to destroy the ozone layer because those radicals will come off and create all kinds of mess for O3 up there in the stratosphere. Now, let's look at this one because this one's kind of, this one's a little tricky one and teachers love to give this 
And if they don't love to give it, they should be given it, because it's a real important type of molecule and a real important type of thing to be able to know. What are you going to call this one right here? Well, first of all, you look at, well, longest continuous chain is four. No, those aren't carbons. Those are chlorines. Settle down. Longest continuous chain of carbons. So it's one, two. So it's an F. So it's an ethene. Yeah, okay, that's good. Now, what's on the ethene? Well, there's two chloros on it. One's on the first carbon and one's on the second. Because if both of them were on this one here, it would be a dichloro and it would be a 1,1 dichloro. But because the chloros are on the 1 and the 2, here's one chlorine on the 1, one chlorine on the 2, this is going to be a 1, 2 hyphen dichloroethane. But chem guy, so is that. See? 1, 2 dichloros on the ethene. Ethene. Yeah, but this molecule is different than this one. They are isomers of each other, but they have different chemical properties because those are hydrogens, right? And if you could draw straight lines this way and this way, you would realize that because of the electronegative pull of carbon being higher than the hydrogen here, we have an arrow pointing this way, but we also have an arrow pointing this way because chlorine is more electronegative than carbon. And that means then that, that these arrows, these vectors, don't cancel. And what we're going to get here is a molecule that's polar. But this one's nonpolar because the arrows go this way and they go this way, this way, and they cancel out. And so this is actually a nonpolar molecule and this one's polar. They have the same formula. They're isomers of each other. They should probably be the same compound, but because of the fact that the carbons are located in different corners, we have to actually call them different names to be able to describe the polar one and the nonpolar one. This one is going to be called, because the two chlorines are on the same side, they're like sisters. So we call it cis. I don't know what that stands for. I just say sisters. <laughs> I know. Cis 1,2-dichloroethene. What do we call this one? Same name here except these two chlorines are across from each other, this prefix makes more sense to me, that would be trans, because trans means across. So it would be trans 1,2-dichloroethene for that one. That's kind of cool, hey? I think it is. What's this one? All right. One, two, three carbons, longest chain. That's going to be a propane. What do you see? I see iodines on the... It could be on this 2 and the 3. No, no, no. You know better than that. This is going to be the 1 and this is going to be the 2 now. So you're going to have iodines on the 1, the 2, and the 2. 1, 2, 2. So it's 1, 2, 2, what? 3, tri, what? Iodo. Yeah, I know there's two I's there, but we keep it in there. 1, 2, 2, tri, iodo, propane. That's the name of that one. Have fun with those.